In this video, we're gonna discuss how the Pocket 4K's dual native ISO affects low light performance and dynamic range. If you don't know what native ISO is, basically all cameras have a certain ISO number that they perform best at, have usually the most dynamic range in that case. If you don't know what yours is, you can do a quick Google search and find out roughly what the ISO your camera is best shooting at. Now, what's cool is newer cameras are coming out like the Pocket 4K, the GH5S and other cameras, and they have something called dual native ISO. Basically, you have two different ISOs to choose from, and they both have a different way of interpreting dynamic range. I recommend watching this video on dynamic range by Filmmaker IQ. He goes much more into detail and explains it a whole lot better. So with dual native ISO, you actually have two different settings to work off of when lighting a scene, and they both interpret dynamic range a bit differently. I noticed when I was filming, if I were to go from ISO 1000 to ISO 1250, that's just a third of a stop, I would lose a ton of highlight detail. Now why is this? I'm only going up a third of a stop and losing like three stops of highlight detail? What's going on here? Well, if we look at this chart here, it actually explains just that. When we go from ISO 1000 to 1250, we lose three stops of highlight detail. Huh, why is that? That's because it's taking from ISO 1250 from its dual native ISO at 3200. So in result, we don't have as much highlight detail, but we do gain some latitude in the shadows. And that becomes very interesting when you begin to light a scene or even expose for a scene when working with dual native ISO. With that, we're able to trade highlight detail and shadow detailed and vice versa. So what cases would this be useful for? Let's say you're filming an ultra moody shot. Everything's really dark and your scene is dancing in those shadows. Well, if you don't have much highlight detail there, well, we don't need to tell the camera to capture it. We can simply trade some dynamic range for the shadow detail. So by going to ISO 1250, now we have much cleaner shadows. So what about scenes that require more detail in those highlights? Well, then you wanna go back down to the first native ISO because then we capture more of that highlight detail while we let the kind of shadows just fall off. So we do risk getting slightly noisier shadows. For this example shot, I'm toggling back and forth from ISO 1000 and 1250, and we can clearly see that highlight detail clipping and also the noise shadows becoming cleaner and more noisy. So for this shot, I actually prefer going down to 1000, even though it's a darker scene, I wanna capture those highlight details and I don't really care if the shadows are slightly noisy, I can live with that, as long as I know I have the detail I want. So now that you know this, it is crucial when you're lighting a scene or going out and filming, gotta keep this in mind because it's gonna drastically change how your camera is capturing all that data. Know that with cameras that have dual native ISO, you have a choice when it comes to dynamic range. If you're interested in learning more about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, or you want to try it out for yourself, you can go to lensrentals.com and use the coupon code NATE15 at the checkout to save 15% off your order. Thank you guys for watching.